Welcome to this week's Herb of the Week. This week's Herb of the Week is aloe. It's actually pronounced aloe, but because everyone pronounces it aloe, I'll just refer to it as aloe. <laughs> um, aloe vera is a common species name, and which is synonymous with aloe barbadensis so they are used interchangeably um, more common I suppose is aloe vera um, and I'm sure some of the barbadensis um, plants are mistakenly referred to as aloe vera but they're pretty much um, similar in their actions and properties so it's interesting with this the family categorization or classification, um, I've seen a f kind of discrepancies um, from numerous sources about where this actually resides in the classification system. It was it some places referred to it being in the Aloeaceae family, um, and then some refer to it being in the Liliaceae family. Um, some have said it's it used to be in the Liliaceae family and it's moved over to the Aloeaceae family. Um, then I read it was formally classified as part of the Asphodelaceae family, which is also referred to as uh, Asphodel. Um, subfamily um, and I so I looked at Kew Gardens because they were the ones who did the DNA screening of the plants to modify the classification system and basically try to update it into the 21st century here with our technology to do DNA screenings and so they have said it's moved now into the Xanthoroaceae family um, and so, um, probably technically, scientifically, it's, that's the most, um, recent ca classification of aloe. Um, however, you will see it in many books and, um, resources listed in, under the Liliaceae family or the Aloeaceae family. So, um, just be aware of that. The keywords, and this is referring to the lily family, or lily ACA, um, are monocot flowers with parts in threes, the sepals and petals usually identical. Common names for aloe are aloe, <laughs> aloe vera, um, barbados aloe, and curaso, or curaçao aloe. Um, also folk names include burn plant and medicinal medicine plant. So you know you can kind of glean some uses by the folk names. So when you see burn plant you would think oh great it's for skin issues, burns, sunburns, whatnot. So the habitat and range, the genus aloe is native to South Africa, Arabia, and the Cape Verde Islands and consists of 325 species that are tender evergreen perennials, shrubs, trees, and climbers, many of which are difficult to distinguish from each other. As far as aloe vera, I've read that it's originates from Africa. Also read that it's uh, the origins uncertain. Um, it is widely naturalized in the Mediterranean regions, India, the West Indies, and tropical and subtropical America. It's highly cultivated around the world, so there's no threat or endangerment. It has escaped from cultivation and become naturalized in um, you know, all of these areas I mentioned, the Mediterranean, North Africa, the Indian subcontinent, South America, and the Caribbean. So it's doing very well. Here you see the 
the spikes, the flower spikes of the aloe vera. So aloe is a short-stemmed, shrubby aloe, frequently suckering and forming dense clumps. So it's a clump-forming perennial, suckering at the base with dense rosettes of thick, spiky, gray-green leaves, which are red-spotted only in young specimens. The leaves are succulent, and so that's how to tell between an aloe and an agave. Look at the leaves, you know, the aloe are the mucilaginous, they're succulent, whereas the agaves tend to be fibrous. So the leaves are erect, and then they form that dense rosette. Um, they grow, the leaves grow about 50 centimeters long, with margins that are pinkish, with many small spines. So that part could get to two or three feet tall. Um, and you'll see the leaf surfaces are sometimes marked with those white flecks or spots on them. As you can see here, the yellow flowers are tubular and they can grow up to three centimeters long with the anthers and stigma protruding the flowers are born in the summer in cylindrical racemes on a branch panicle up to 90 centimeters tall. For aloe, the sap is mainly used. In Chinese, it's called lu hui, I believe. But the leaves are occasionally used as well. Um, it does like very well drained soil, like a gritty mix in the sun. It is easy to cultivate. There's no special requirements. Uh, compost should be soaked when watering during the growing season and allowed to dry out between waterings. It can be grown in a cool, warm glass house, a greenhouse, and put aside for the summer. Plants tend to offset profusely, so propagation is by po potting of the offsets, and it rarely self um, rarely sets seed. Here you can see the seed. Um, you do want to watch out for that mealy bug because they can attack the pot plants. So, like I said, the genus Aloe has uh, 325 species, and they are somewhat hard to tell apart. They do vary greatly in size, but all the architectural plants with thick spiky foliage often glaucous or pattern are and bold spikes of uh, colorful flowers. Um, <clears throat> some larger species are grown in gardens in warm climate. Um, aloe vera was mentioned in the Ebers papyrus you remember that from the history class, um, which um, was from the Egypt re culture that dated from um, 1552 BC and has been identified in wall paintings in ancient Egypt where it was used to treat excess mucus and supposedly Cleopatra used it to maintain her beauty. Um, Records in ancient Egypt date back to the 4th century BC. It was described by Dioscorides in De, Mera, um, De, Mater De Materia Medica. Um, Alexander the Great is said to have conquered um, Socotra, an island in the Indian Ocean to which several aloe species are native in order to secure supplies of aloes to heal his soldiers' wounds. Here's a nice potted plant. 
aloe. You can um, cut the leaves. You want to usually generally wait two or three years though. So you want a two to three year old plant before you cut the leaves. The sap is drained from the cut leaves and used fresh or evaporated to a brown crystalline solid for the preparation of creams, decoctions, lotions, pills, and tinctures. And I did see in your um, natural health, the encyclopedia of herbal medicine book, they had a nice picture of the processing part, how you cut open the leaves, so you can refer to that to know um, how to do that. But you can cut them in chunks or just um, cut I was always um, cutting the leaf um, parallel to the um, parenchyma, which is basically the gel inside, and then so you cut off that the outer leaf part and then just scrape out the gel. Um, so anyway, as far as the therapeutic preparation, you could do just the small pieces about a dime shape or um, that could be fresh or use the powder so they can make a powder um, and that's usually with the the bitter parts or bitter aloe which is the base of the leaves that contain those um, constituents that are used mainly for as a laxative um, so you could make a tincture from that part of the plant and you would only take a few drops of that before um, with water before meals to stimulate digestion um, so larger doses are for to use as a laxative but it's definitely one of the main plants used topically so it's a lot of using the gel and and juice topically which we'll get into in a little bit all right, here's a picture of that beautiful gel inside the leaf. And I think the, it's, it's pronounced um, parenchyma, actually. So that's just the inner part of the leaf, um, which is the gel, parenchyma. And um, you could use this just straight onto a burn or a wound. And um, it's very famous. It was definitely popularized popularized in the 50s for sunburns in the US um, the whole leaf is bitter so it's very bitter however just that mucilage alone um, tastes fairly pleasant to most people aloe is as you can guess cooling it's a cooling plant since it treats burns and it's also drying actually and it is stimulating So that the aloe gel is different from the whole aloe. The gel that you generally find in the, the market is um, has that bitter yellow latex removed from it, and that's what re is referred to as bitter aloe, um, which has the base of the leaf. Um, so removing that um, removes the laxative inducing anthraquinones. Um, so the bitter yellow lax, um, yellow latex beneath aloe's outer skin contains anthraquinone um, barbaloin, which is used for chronic constipation with bowel atenine. The whole plant, or at least the area with the bitter yellow latex, um, is used for this medicinal purpose. Um, and so the constituents um, responsible for its laxative action are activated by the intestinal flora. 
the inner mucilaginous part of the plant. It contains a polysaccharide called gluca glucomannan, which is anti-inflammatory, antipruritic, and a vulnerary. So you can use it to heal burns, wounds, gastric ulcers, um, you know, sunburn, eczema, psoriasis, frostbite, acne, dermatitis, um, sores caused by herpes simplex virus. So many um, uses topically for this plant. Oh, here's this lovely picture I want to put up as a to show you a variety, the variation of aloe vera. There's this museum on this island um, in the Canary Islands off of Spain that is devoted to aloe. It just it's an aloe museum. <laughs> so this is one of the pretty um, varieties of aloe they have. So anyway, getting back to the indications. Um, it does have allo alloxtin in in it or alloxtin A. Um, it's a constituent, and that has immune stimulating properties and anti tumor activity. Uh, it's also shown to be antiviral, anti diabetic, and immunomodulator. Another constituent is called alloemodin, which has been shown to possess anti-cancer, antibacterial, diuretic, immunosuppressive, and vasorelaxant activities in um, research. So something to watch. Um, it's also, so it's definitely anti-inflammatory. It's antifungal, anti-parasitic. Um, it is an amenogog. It's um, a great emollient, a vulnerary, um, choleretic, stomactic, uh, immunomodulating, they said, definitely a laxative, cologagog, and um, antipruritic. So some, some sources just had a few of these, and I just I try to do all the research to take and and bring in all the information together so um, yeah many sources will just have a few the main uses but um, all together it has quite a range of what it can help with um, so it, it's definitely a, a strong purgative um, that you need to be careful with the leaves as far as the dosage um, but it can help um, intestinal parasites too um, well, with the laxative effects, um, can stimulate the, the uterus, so you want to watch that for um, causing miscarriage. Um, so you want to avoid during pregnancy. Um, and j like I said, just taking a small amount can have a stimulating action on the di digestive tract to enhance digestion. Beautiful flowers, huh? Um, so as far as internally, you know, in addition to enhancing the digestive process and, you know, as a laxative for chronic constipation, specifically like following an iron medication, it would be very useful. Um, helps with poor appetite, any digestive problems, colitis, um, gastric ulcers and um, irritable bowel syndrome and to prevent griping from um, lax in laxative formulations it's usually combined with fennel or tamarind so I can combine it with those um, and so we went over the external uses um, you can also use it um, in colonic irrigation and people have also used it to prevent nail biting <laughs> that bitter quality imagine <clears throat> it has been used successfully to treat diabetes 
So it's lowering glucose levels um, in people with type 2 diabetes, it's shown, diabetic wounds, and it does lower cholesterol um, for people who have high cholesterol. As far as contraindications, again, do not give to pregnant women or people with hemorrhoids. It's really important to remember those leaves are an effective purgative and require great care over dosage. Um, it can cause a mis miscarriage and serious digestive upsets in excess um, if, it's, if it contains more than 50 parts per million of alloin. So <clears throat> it's usually, um, you know, further process to reduce the alloin um, amount to a safe level. So different countries will um, have a certain, you know, regulation to the limit of amount of alloin actually permitted in the, the juice gel. Um, so it's not recommended for children that um, the laxative um, part of the plant, so that bitter yellow leaf, um, you know, exudes that um, strongly laxative component. So it's just too strong for children. Um, and it's not very common, but the, the gel can occasionally cause skin irritation for some people. Other uses include uh, tanning, skin care, pharmaceutical preparations, food. I'll put the gel and juice in my smoothies. Um, food supplements, herbal remedies, obviously, um, cosmetics, even dishwashing liquid. Um, just wanted to share some more information about the worldly use. The use of aloe vera in um, Chinese medicine was first mentioned in the 11th century and it appears in Anglo-Saxon medical texts having been introduced to Europe in the 10th century. Mahatma Gandhi utilized aloe vera having discovered its benefits while visiting South Africa and claimed that it helped him withstand prolonged fasting. Okay, and for the spiritual folk information, it is um, known as a feminine plant ruled by the moon and has a water dominated element, has powers of protection and luck. Magical uses um, include that it guards against evil influences and prevents household accidents. It is hung over doors in Africa to drive away evil and to bring good luck. In Mexico, clumps of freshly cut aloe are placed in large wreaths along with whole garlic bulbs, pictures of saints, packets of magical herbs, lodestones, rock salt, and pine nuts, and hung up for protection, luck, money, and so on. All right, there you have it. Aloe vera, enjoy. You could experience the bitter aloes if you want. You can find that in your local health food store if you are in need of that experience. Um, or it's best if you have your own aloe vera plant. Um, you know, instead of going and buy like aloe juice or aloe gel in a bottle, I would recommend Maybe this is a good inspiration to buy your plant and start having a relationship with a live plant with it and, um, you know, take off a leaf and, and chop it up or cut the gel out and experience the gel. Um, so enjoy your week with aloe.